So tonight I'm going to talk about the river, birds of the river Blackwater. So it's going to be a snapshot of uh, just some of the birds and where you can see them around the river Blackwater. Now I've been bird watching the around the river Blackwater for nearly 40 years. Uh, in fact, over 40 years now. Um, I was born in Malden um, a long, long time ago. And uh, so for 25 of my early years, I, I lived in Malden and learned to birdwatch around Malden. So this whole area is very sort of dear to my heart. So let me click the button. So we, I'm gonna break this down into uh, seasons um, because it's such, a, such an interesting place. Um, I mean, I can't cover all the species tonight, but hopefully this will just give you a flavor of what you can see. So here's a little view of uh, the black water on a nice calm day with storm clouds in the distance over uh, London. So you're all familiar, well, hopefully a lot of you are familiar with the River Blackwater, this very iconic uh, view of uh, St. Mary's Church in Malden and the Thames barges. Um, this is one that's uh, replicated on lots of postcards and uh, paintings uh, all throughout, throughout uh, England. And then this is the uh, Anglo-Saxon elderman, uh, Brithnoth, which is situated at uh, Malden Prom, um, overlooking Northern Ireland, where the Battle of Malden was held in 991. Um, lovely, great area for birding. And as a, young, as a youngster, I remember uh, bird watching there and seeing flocks of over 250 common sandpipers and uh, all sorts of rarities. Um, when I first started, then I realized a few years later that they were all Dunlin and uh, all these rarities that I'd found were in fact quite common species. Um, not so pleasant view is uh, the lumbering uh, reactors or X reactors at Bradwell Power Station. But this whole area is very important for birds and birding. But of course, the Blackwater is probably most famous for its Thames barges. Um, there's always a good number out on the water in the spring and summer. And uh, Malden's a great place to, uh, to view these. And here's a nice shot. This was just taken just outside the Blackwater on the River Colne um, during a, the Colne barge match uh, a few years ago. But uh, yeah, absolutely fabulous vessels steeped in history and uh, still being used today, which is really, really good. But obviously not all the vessels uh, survive. So there's a few remnants of uh, boats and stuff around, especially around Haybridge and Malden, where they've just basically been abandoned. But you can see here, the birds are, you know, not, not at all bothered by a rotting structure. And uh, yeah, add, that adds to a bit of character. So these are some of my favorite birding sites. So I haven't, I haven't, I could add lots more, but uh, I've picked out quite a few, quite a few of them. Um, so we'll start off in the west with uh, Haybridge Gravel Pits and Malden Prom. So they're two interlinked, very close together sites. Um, Haybridge, Haybridge Gravel Pits has got a bit of a freshwater lagoon with reed beds. So very important for roosting waders and passerines. And then Malden Prom is a great place to get close to waders. Um, they're quite uh, used to seeing lots of people walking along the promenade, so they're, they're oblivious to people. So if you're into photography, Malden Prom, fantastic place to visit. And then a little bit further east on the south shore of the Blackwater is Mayland Creek. Um, it's quite a walk. You either walk in, park in Mayland Sea and walk north around the creek or park in Malden and then walk eastward um, on the south side of Northern Ireland, but really good really good birding place, especially good for ducks, uh, waders, and although not birds, but seals, good numbers of common seals in Mayland Creek. And then opposite the other side of the Blackwater, we've got Goldhanger, again, another really good place to watch, especially in the winter, um, good numbers of roosting waders, plus some of your rarest sea ducks and grebes. And the same goes across to Rolls Farm and St. Lawrence Bay. They're both excellent uh, birding sites, um, St Lawrence is really good because it faces north so the sun's behind you whereas Rolls Farm has to be a little bit careful on a on a sunny day 
um, because you're looking straight into the sun. But uh, both sites are incredibly good for sea ducks, grebes, waders, and birds of prey. And then we start heading up to the sort of mouth of the estuary now. So every, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the two nature reserves at Tolsbury Wick and Old Hall Marshes. Tolsbury Wick is Essex Wildlife Trust and Old Hall Marshes is RSPB. And these are great all round, all round sites, um, all year round sites. You know, never a dull, never have a bad day at either of those uh, reserves. And then I've just got to move my Zoom bit out of the way. Um, and then we go to uh, Bradwell. So, as, so although we've got the big power station nearby, the, uh, the water side at Bradwell is again, another really good place, especially for roosting waders um, and birds of prey, uh, which we'll mention a bit later. And then we just finish up uh, on West Mersey. So just right on the mouth of the estuary. So the Esplanade and West Mersey Hard, fantastic spots. Again, probably better in the winter, but again, great for grebes, geese, divers, sea ducks, um, and lots more. So we kick off, I'm just gonna have a quick drink. Uh, we, quick, we kick off in winter, um, which is probably the, probably the busiest uh, season on the uh, estuary. And uh, this, this view will be familiar with all of you, the, the, the flocks of Brent geese that we get on the estuary in the winter. Um, it's, a simple, it's a delight just to hear them grumbling to each other, um, even on a foggy day like this. Um, you know, they're just, oh, they're just not iconic, iconic birds of Essex and uh, one of the Blackwater. So most of the birds that visit the Blackwater are interested in this stuff. It's mud. Um, incredibly rich mud, uh, great for, for waders, uh, divers, divers, ducks, and uh, lots of other species. Um, and so for, foot for foot, this is full of worms and uh, snails and so much food. So I'm going to kick off the, uh, some of the birding with some of the scarcer grebes that you will find. Now, if you watched uh, the last ish episode of the Birds of Essex, which was on last Friday night, Matt and I did a feature on winter grebes. So some of these pictures might be a little bit familiar, familiar to you. So this is a winter Slavonian grebe or horned grebe, um, very sort of black and white grebe, these lovely bright white cheeks. And the black water's in a really good place to see these. Um, Numbers have dropped in the last sort of 15, 20 years, but there's still a fair few around, and especially the areas around uh, Goldhanger, uh, Rolls Farm, Tolsbury Wick, and Old Hall Marshes are really good for these. And here's another shot of a, a different Slavonian grebe in flight. Again, showing that very clear cut black and white face markings. And you can see it's even, it's got his red, his red eye gleaming there in the uh, sunshine. And as you saw last week, this is a molting uh, Slavonian grebe. So they start molting March, March time, something like that, um, before they head north to their breeding grounds, either in maybe Scotland or Iceland. Um, but this one's just starting to get a little bit of chestnut plumage on its flanks. And uh, it's just starting to get, it's just starting to lose that uh, clear cut black and white face marking, just having a few black splodges now appearing. And the close relative of the Slavonian grebe is a black neck grebe. It's a much duskier neck and face, a much more domed head and uh, that more upturned, upturned beak. I think these two must have had a row because they're uh, must have, uh, facing away from each other. But this is quite a scarce, a scarce grebe on the black water. Um, occurs most years, but only in, only in sort of twos and threes, but it's well worth looking out for while you're scanning for your Slavonians. And here's another shot of a black neck grebe. Uh, this one was taken just off Old Hall Marshes a few years ago. Um, and again, you can see that more sort of domed head shape and the upturned beak. So one of the scarcest grebes, I haven't featured Little Grebe and Great Crested Grebe, which are both quite common on the Blackwater throughout the year, especially in winter. But this is the scarcest grebe that we get in the winter. Um, 
This is redneck grebe. Um, this one was actually in summer plumage um, by the end of March. Um, this was taken off Goldhanger uh, maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, not the best photograph in the world. Um, this was taken from a moving boat. So uh, never easy to grab shots like this, but uh, so I was pleased to get anything at all. But you can just about make out this rusty red neck and uh, dusky face with the yellow base to the bill. Now the Blackwater is uh, well known for divers as well. Um, red throated diver, such as this, um, occur in small numbers. Um, a bit more common towards, out towards Mersey than up the sort of the inner black water, um, but especially off Bradwell, uh, Mersey, you can often see good numbers of these, especially uh, if the sprat shoals come in in the, in the autumn and winter. This one's just sort of starting to molt a little bit, but uh, yeah, the sorry, upturned bill, very slim, very slim, sleek diver. Now, uh, black-throated diver is probably the scarcest diver now on the black water. Um, I haven't got any pictures of black-throated, not that were taken uh, here in the UK, but uh, so we're gonna jump straight to the largest of the divers, um, the Great Northern Diver, or if you follow uh, various uh, other sort of bird names, this is the common loon, um, which they call it in North America. So yeah, it's the biggest, biggest of the divers. Um, that we get in the black water. It's a big sort of small goose sized diver. It's very, cool. it's very distinctive head shape. Um, this sort of like, look like it's, it's hit, the, hit the surface of the uh, water and made a big crown and a uh, very dagger build. And it's got these sort of white notches on the neck. Again, as you saw on last week's uh, Birds of Essex. Um, so all these pictures were taken on the black water. Some were from a boat, somewhere from from land um, so often the best time to photograph and see these is at low tide um, they love to come in quite close to the to the shoreline especially off mersey old hall tolsbury wick um, gold hanger and rolls farm and st lawrence bay um, to catch crabs uh, crabs are a main part of their diet um, so yeah you can often get some really good views um, as i did with this bird that uh, had a good old flap and stretch and literally sort of virtually came out of the water right in front of us. Um, one of my favourite birds to see in the winter and uh, always brightens your day by seeing one of these. And here's a few other shots of Great Northern Divers again showing this very distinct head shape. It's very lumpy forehead and uh, they say this big dagger bill. I say you can get very close views. This one was taken off Old Hall Marshes um, and just, yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal birds. And uh, if, you sort of manage, if you manage to catch up with one in late spring, sometimes you can hear them calling. Uh, they, they start to become very vocal um, as before they migrate northwards. So again, it's well worth listening out for these. And again, this one was taken from a boat, but uh, yeah, show really, really well. And uh, it's probably some of my best Great Northern Diver pictures. And even on a foggy day, that distinctive shape is very uh, um, distinctive. You know, you've got that lovely forehead. Um, but all, not all days are sunny, as you all know, so that uh, you have to make the most of it. So cormorant. So big numbers of cormorant uh, fish out on the River Blackwater. Um, if you head out onto the estuary, um, first thing in the morning, you'll see birds streaming out from Aberton Reservoir, where they've roosted for the night, going out to feed either on the Blackwater or the outer estuary. Um, and you can get flocks up to sort of three, four hundred um, out on the water, especially off Rolls Farm. Rolls Farm must, have, must be really good for fish. And uh, you occasionally get not, not an uh, amazing shot, but uh, these birds were all flying away. But these were all basically feeding en masse. Um, on fish and they sort of bait, they, they sort of shoal the fish together and uh, have a good old nosh up really along with a few herring gulls there as well. So a bird that we get also get in the estuary um, is shag, European shag. Uh, this is a young bird with sort of pale fringes to its wings and one of the best places to see these 
is um, around Old Hall Marshes and West Mersey. Uh, they often sit out on the mooring boys, especially on the Sulcut Channel on the north side of Old Hall Marshes. And uh, you can get some really, really good views. And this is a different bird. So you'll notice this bird's got a, uh, a Darvik ring on its leg with the letters TXX. So this bird was, was uh, ringed on the Isle of May in Scotland. And uh, it wintered down on the River Blackwater uh, for a few years. Um, so it's well worth keeping an eye out for these, especially and, and colouring birds as well, um, because they are quite sight faithful in the winter. So again, this one was off Mersey. So if you're ever out off Mersey Way, keep your eyes peeled. So we went, so we sort of make our way through the geese now. So everyone's familiar with grey leg geese, that large sort of grey goose, bright orange beak, you know, large size. Um, these are quite common around the Blackwater and breed sort of on the smaller gravel pits ne nearby. But uh, we get good numbers of these in the winter. But these are our star bird in the winter, the dark bellied Brent geese. So if anyone visits the uh, Essex Bird Watching Society website, this picture might be a little bit familiar. Um, I took this picture on one of the on, off of Thames Barge a few years ago and uh, I was very pleased that the bird watching site used it on their new website. But this is an iconic species and, uh, you know, one that we all love to see. Um, it's always a sad, sad time when they head back in the spring. But uh, these you can see all around the estuary. Um, you know, they're, they're very tolerant of humans and most of the time. And uh, yeah, get some really, really nice views. That very distinctive white neck marking and sort of dusky uh, grey back. And here's another little group just coming out of the river, um, just off Goldhanger. And uh, yeah, absolutely stunning bird. So a couple of young birds in this flock, a uh, bird in the middle and a bird on the left with those sort of pale fringes on their wings. Oh, and a bird to the left of that as well. But you can at certain places, especially places like uh, Old Hall Marshes and Tolsbury Wick, get some very, very close views. This is an adult brink goose um, feeding at close range. And uh, they're very tolerant once they're, while they're feeding. They're not at all worried uh, about you, as long as you sort of keep still. So this is an adult. And then this bird's a, a juvenile um, with no neck collar. And I say that pale fringing on the wings there. Um, some years are better for uh, brink geese and others, juveniles. Um, I think last winter was quite a reasonable winter, but uh, it does vary from year to year, depending on breeding conditions in the Siberia. So always worth a scan amongst the, uh, the dark belly brink geese for something, something a little bit rarer. This is a uh, black brant. So this is the sort of North American counterpart of the, the Brent goose. Um, actually, surprisingly, the Blackwater is a really good place to see these um, and can be found anywhere around the Malden area. Goldhanger is a good spot. The dingy sort of St. Lawrence um, through to sort of that area. Um, Old Hall, Mersey, uh, this bird, this bird's bird that was taken on Mersey Island a few years ago. Um, but I think it's pretty much site faithful. It comes back uh, most winters. Um, I think it has been seen this winter. So if you're out again on Mersey, keep your eyes peeled for this. And occasionally they show really, really nicely. Uh, they've got much bolder neck markings than the dark belly Brent goose and this big white flank patch, absolutely stunning. And again, this was taken on Mersey, again, where the, the birds are quite tolerant to people. So you can get some amazing photographs. And then this is probably the one of the skit. Well, this is pale bellied Brent goose. So not an amazing photograph, a little bit blurry, but uh, this is a young bird, but it just shows this very, it has got a very pale belly and a very distinct cut off between the neck markings and the, the flank. Um, but these occur around the black water. There's normally a few every winter in Essex. So again, another one to keep an eye out for. And some years, we get a bit of an invasion of these. These are uh, white fronted geese. So these are the Russian white fronted geese. Um, the nice big black belly markings. And again, places like Bradwell, 
Old Hall, Tolsbury, and Goldhanger, and St. Lawrence, and that sort of South Blackwater. Really good place to look out for these. Um, I think last winter was, uh, um, um, there was a massive influx into Essex. Um, there were sort of hundreds and hundreds. Um, we've got a few in Essex at the moment. Um, there's a few at Old Hall Marshes at the moment. So uh, these are probably uh, the only ones on the Blackwater as far as I'm aware. But uh, if you know of any, please let me know. And uh, you're probably aware of there was been, there's been a couple of red-breasted geese in Essex. So this is probably one of our scarcest geese. Um, but this one, I could have used a picture from sort of the crouch, but uh, this is actually was taken on Mersey Island. Um, oh, probably 10 years ago or so now. This was just seen near the Strood, uh, just on the border of the Blackwater. And this was just feeding on sort of in, in beet field with, uh, with dark belly Brent goose. So I'd say not the most amazing photo, but this is a, a Blackwater um, red-breasted goose. How are we doing for time? Yeah, we're doing well. Um, so yeah, widgeon. So the Blackwater is amazing for wintering ducks. We have thousands of widgeon wintering. Um, the nice male there with his russet head and his yellow Mohican stripe, and then the sort of the, the more cinnamon colour female. Um, yeah, these are these are very numerous all around the Blackwater, um, and you hear their whistling whistling calls echoing, which is a brilliant sound. Also pretty impressive when they're in flight as well, uh, large flocks, um, especially on the sort of the north side of the Blackwater. Um, and they get disturbed by a raptor or other other person or something. Uh, yeah, really massive numbers. One of my favourite uh, ducks here, this is a pintail. So this was taken just on the south side of uh, Ozzy Island. So for anyone who knows the area well, this is uh, in the background there, you can see a white house, a creamy house. That's uh, Stansgate Abbey. Um, that's the sort of family home of the MP Tony Ben. So again, but that whole south side of the Blackwater, really, really important for wintering pintail. Um, if you walk from Malden out past Northy Island, along South Southey Creek, really good place to see pintail in winter. And uh, yeah, absolutely stunning, stunning duck. And here's a few more in flight. Again, this was taken on the south side of the Blackwater. Um, yeah, male pintail doesn't get much better than that really. So we're lucky to get a few wintering sea duck on the estuary in the winter. Probably the most numerous of these is red-breasted Maganza. Um, so here we go. we've got a couple of males and a couple of female type birds. Um, and again, these can be found right up the sort of estuary up towards Haybridge Basin, uh, right the way up through to Bradwall, Mersey in between. Um, maybe about between, I suppose, between 70 and 100 birds at least winter on the estuary every winter. And again, fabulous, fabulous ducks, especially in the sort of early morning light. Got this very long neck and you can see it's rusty red breast there and that nice upturned red bill. Um, here's a female red breasted Maganza. Uh, again, if you have a wander around the estuary, um, especially at high tide, you're bound to find lots of these uh, beautiful saw bills. And again, here's another mixed flock. So it's quite a big flock of red-breasted Magansas. Again, this was taken just off Tolsbury. Um, and the same numbers, you can get some fair-sized flocks. Um, these have been dis just been disturbed um, from the water by a sailing boat. But yeah, they, they give amazing, amazing views. So probably all familiar with Goldeneye. So these are quite common on the reservoirs, but uh, they used to be relatively numerous on the on the estuary, but in the last couple of years, numbers have, have, have dropped substantially. Um, and I was talking to Colin Mackenzie Grieve last week or week before, and he's seen very few this winter around Old Hall Marshes, which is his local patch. Um, we think maybe the mild weather, maybe, you know, um, a lot of the birds haven't moved from Aberton because it's been quite mild. Um, Aberton has been pretty much ice free. so. They've been staying on the reservoirs. 
But uh, yeah, gold and I, there's always quite a few around the estuary. Uh, gold hangers are a really good place to see these. And if you're very lucky, some winters we get smew. Um, these three were off uh, Old Hall Marshes uh, quite a few years ago and uh, in the Sulcut Channel and gave some really nice views um, from the seawall. But yeah, I think, that, well, I know I said Pintail was nice, but that Drake Smew, that's pretty, pretty special. Then more sea duck, uh, common scoters. Uh, we get a small number of common scoters wintering in the estuary. Um, these are all sort of female or juvenile type birds. And we tend to get more female juveniles than, than the adult, adult males for some reason. Um, I see very few adult males on the estuary, but tend to see a lot of these type birds. And this was just taken off gold hanger. And again, lovely, lovely duck. And here's a slightly closer view. These lovely sort of pale cheeks and that lovely substantial bill. So this is a velvet scoter. Again, some years we just, we don't get many of these, but occasionally get the odd one or two birds. I mean, there's certainly been a bird off, off Mersey Island uh, this last winter, um, but this was taken off Tolsbury, off Rolls Farm. Um, you can see lovely sort of white secondary patch there. That lovely white spotting on the face. So this one's now taken flight and is flying past. So yeah, well worth looking out for, well worth scanning, spending a bit of time scanning out on the estuary for these. Uh, this is a different velvet scoter. This was taking on, up, taken on a stormy, sort of very late early, or well, late autumn, early winter day. Um, but again, you can see how rough the seas are there. So I presume this bird had just come into the estuary for a little bit of shelter. Um, another bird, which you sort of tend to think more of freshwater is the scorp. Um, the black water in some years get quite a few scorp, uh, especially when it's cold on the continent. Um, these were taken off Goldhanger about uh, eight or nine years ago. Um, there was a flock of about 25, 30 um, sort of males and females and uh, young birds as well. Um, so again, you're probably used to seeing these at Aberton. We've had good numbers at Aberton uh, to uh, this winter, but occasionally you can find them out on the the salt water on the river. And here's another closer shot of a scorp uh, just taking off. And like scorp, some winters we get quite a few long-tailed ducks. Numbers again have dropped over the last 20 or 30 years, but uh, some years we're still lucky to get uh, to get good numbers. And again, the area around Goldhanger so the area around Goldhanger has got lots of mussel and, and oyster beds, uh, which things like the long-tailed ducks and scoters absolutely adore. So again, that's probably a good place to start if you want to get long-tailed duck uh, on your local patch list or blackwater list. So we've got a couple of males there, sort of left and right, and then female types in the middle. Um, and this boat, this one was very close. This was, this was taken from a Thames barge that I was on um, a few years back. And literally the barge, we sailed right up to this uh, long-tailed duck before it took, took flight. So you can get some really good views. And again, here's a little flock, just uh, I think it's the same group that was off Goldhanger, but uh, just taking flight. And uh, this bird was taken in the sort of Tolsbury Channel a few years ago. So again, another bird to keep your eyes peeled for during the winter. But not just ducks. Um, things like uh, guillemots and razorbills occasionally occur in the winter. Uh, guillemot is by far the common, more common species. And this one, I think, looks like it's uh, of the bridled form, um, which is quite unusual in the winter. But again, this was probably off Goldhanger or Tolsbury, and they just love bobbing around mid channel, feeding on fish. So, to raptors. Uh, the Blackwater, and especially uh, towards the area around Tolsbury and Bradwell, fantastic place to see marsh harriers in the winter. Um, big, it's quite a big roost at Old Hall Marshes, um, and uh, occasionally at Tolsbury Wick. But uh, these birds hunt throughout the whole area, and uh, again, on a nice 
blue sunny blue sky sunny day you can't beat that another winter raptor uh, how i managed to get this picture i have no idea but uh, this is a, a merlin so incredibly fast raptor i think more luck than anything else but uh, the area around tollsbury so old hall marshes tollsbury wick both excellent places for merlin as is the south side of the blackwater that area between St Lawrence and Bradwell, as you sort of curve up towards the power station, is a good area. They hunt along the coast there. Um, again, fabulous, fabulous bird. Well, I have to excuse the most awful shot of a hen harrier. This is a male hen harrier. I'm afraid this is the best shot I've got of a hen harrier, especially taken in Essex. Um, but it's lovely, lovely bird with black wingtips and a lovely sort of ghostly grey underparts and white rump so these are these are becoming scarcer in Essex um, although this winter there appears to be quite a few around there's a certainly a bird that's doing the tour of uh, Coptal marshes and there's been females um, seen at uh, Solcart and various sites throughout the Blackwater so I'd imagine it relates to more than one bird but uh, again well worth keeping your eyes peeled for if you're out birding now, when I first started birding, I uh, never expected to see these on the estuary. This is peregrine. So this is a immature peregrine. So this was taken sort of a sort of November time. So I presume it's a bird that was born a few months previously. And this was just down near uh, Goldhanger. And it allowed, it was quite oblivious to uh, humans. So it allowed quite close approach. But if you spend the winter around any of the Around any of the coast, it won't take long before you come across peregrine. Um, this is an absolute brute of a female um, that was hunting waders. And uh, if I was a wader, I'd be a little bit, a uh, little bit nervous of that. But absolutely stunning bird. And uh, here it is again, just doing a close flyby by keeping a beady eye on me. But these birds are, are relatively numerous in the winter. Um, they breed nearby, um, so they haven't got very far to travel for their, to their wintering grounds. But there's a little bit of a shot here of a, of a peregrine um, heading into a flock of golden plovers. Um, this happened right above our heads. Um, the golden plovers just went into a mass panic and uh, the plovers scattered everywhere. And here comes the peregrine for a swoop, but it failed, didn't manage to catch a golden plover. Um, so the old golden plovers were, were very lucky that day. So still walking our way through winter. Um, so waders, we'll flick through the waders. So turnstones, so these waders will roost everywhere, anywhere they can. So salt marsh, um, islands, gravel, you know, shingle areas, but even old boats, you know, they're not, they're not too worried where they roost. Um, this is a lovely shot of a little group of turnstone uh, just off Malden at high tide. And of course the Blackwater, um, for those who know it, is incredibly rich in waders um, throughout the year, but especially in winter. Uh, these are not, um, which winter in their thousands on the Blackwater. Um, especially you can see those, well you can see those throughout the Blackwater. But Tolls, Tollsbury, probably the Tollsbury and Bradwell, probably the better places. And here's a little luck uh, mixed group of waders. So we've got uh, Bartel Godwits um, sort of through through the middle here. We've got a couple of turnstone on the bottom left. There's a knot um, sort of middle here and a grey plover sort of bottom bottom right or another knot next to the uh, Bartel Godwit there. But these are these all these species are familiar familiar sight on the Blackwater in winter. And here's a flock of knot. Actually, there's a couple of dunning. Oh, and a black-tailed godwit in there for those who are sharp-eyed. Um, again, the area around Mayland Mayland Creek, really good roost site. Um, and again, in the afternoon, the light is beautiful as these come in to roost at high tide. But as the tide comes up, a lot, especially on a high tide, a lot of the disturbers, 
the waders get disturbed from their roost by the tide. So they perform these magical movements that you've obviously seen on the TV loads of times. Um, although places like Stettisham in North Norfolk is a great place to go, this is really good and it's local. So uh, check your tide time ta 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 tide timetables and uh, try and find a nice high tide and get out there and watch your waders. And here's a, and again, these in the sunlight, they sort of twinkle like little stars. So this is a group of knot and uh, I think there's a few gray plover in there and uh, probably Dunlin as well. And again, an amazing sight. As is this, we saw the golden plovers um, in panic because of the peregrine, but this is just a flock that's taken off um, because of high tide. Um, absolutely beautiful colors on these birds. Uh, lovely sort of gold tones with lovely white underwings. And we get thousands of these in the winter here around the Blackwater. Um, good areas around Malden, off the Malden Prom and Haybridge gravel pits. There's often several thousand uh, roost out there. And again, any areas with big open areas of grassland, such as Old Hall, Tolsbury Wick, and the Bradwell Coast, really, really good for these. And here's, and here's a sort of mixed flock of golden plover and lapwings that uh, were flushed by a marsh harrier over Old Hall marshes a few years ago. Um, just, I mean, the marsh harrier probably wouldn't go for any of those, but it just creates sheer panic amongst the waders. And here's another shot of uh, golden plovers. Um, I think this one's over Mersey Island, over West Mersey. So, so you know, good numbers in this flock as well. A few more wader shots in flight. So these are Dunlin, much browner than the knot and smaller. And again, we get thousands of these on the black water. And they say, if you go up somewhere like Malden, get some fabulous views at uh, low tide as they forage right along the shore next to the walkways. So avocets, when I first started birding around Malden, we never got avocets in the winter. Um, in fact, you didn't get avocets full stop. Um, you had to go somewhere like Minsmere to see these. Whereas now in the winter, we've got several wintering flocks on the Blackwater. Um, the area around Malden and Haybridge is really good and also out towards sort of Tolsbury, so Tolsbury Creek, uh, where the where the uh, Tolsbury Creek comes up into uh, Tolsbury, really good place to see wintering avocets. So apart from the raptors that cause disturbance, obviously over the last few years um, there's lots more man-made uh, pressures that uh, affect the birds. So the black water we met, as I mentioned earlier, is a good place to, for oysters. Obviously the oyster fishermen have to go out to uh, harvest the oysters. So you can see in this shot, this is off gold hanger, uh, one of their like aqua buggy things, um, just disturbing the Brent geese. Um, the birds have, have a lot to put up with in the winter, especially when they're trying to find food. Um, you know, and especially if the weather's cold, you know, they're really desperate to feed and they don't really don't need disturbance like this. And here's a here's a shot of an oyster dredger um, just off Tolsbury. Um, luckily, and although there's more, it seems to be a bit more disturbance nowadays, there's still plenty of places for the birds to roost safely. Um, so they're in pretty good hands at the moment. But you get play, you know, we get idiots, or sorry, pilots doing acrobatics over the estuary. Um, you get paragliders. Um, yeah, you name it, you get it, including uh, our good old friends in the army, in their Apache. This was uh, just off Mersey. Apache came over low level, disturbing absolutely everything. And then about two minutes later, this uh, Puma, Royal Air Force Puma came through really low, just when things were settling down put them all up again. So a uh, bit of a nuisance. And uh, even the police uh, disturb some of the birds now and again. So this is one of the police, this is a police launch off Ozzy Island. But like I say, the birds have, there are lots of nice safe places for the birds. So um, hopefully, um, and also disturbance in the winter tends to be very minimal because it's too cold out there for 
you know, jet skiers and things like that. So just a few more waders. Carl, we've got a few more months to go yet, yeah? and I've only got a little way through. So golden plover on the ground, lovely spangled plumage. And then in the win late winter, uh, we start to get a few rough that winter around the, around the estuary, especially on the wet grassland. So well worth keeping an eye out for these, especially amongst golden plover and lapwings. And towards the outer reaches of the black water, um, where it just turns a little bit more sandier. So Mersey's really good and off Tolsbury Wick and a little bit of Old Hall is a really good place to see Bartel Godwhip. Um, this bird really close range. And a few more of our avocets again, um, just taking flight as the tide comes in. Um, good numbers of curlew. Again, very common species on the Blackwater. Some really big roosts. Um, especially around Tolsbury and uh, Bradwell. Oh, and uh, Ozy Island and Northy Island, really good places to see curlews wintering. And again, not a particularly common bird in numbers, but uh, sandling. If you head out towards uh, West Mersey, you're bound to see a few of these little uh, beauties scampering along the shoreline. And again, they, pr they do prefer the sandier sandier um, shorelines or rockier shorelines, but occasionally they will venture onto mud. Um, this bird was taken at West Mersey a few years ago um, during a particularly cold spell, cold spell. So I think it was just sort of just desperate to feed and, uh, you know, on, the, on, the, on whatever it could find. Um, we get a few spotted red shanks winter on the Blackwater. And again, the area around Tolsbury. Now, I do mention Tolsbury quite a bit in this talk, but it is a really good place for, uh, for birding. Um, but yeah, Tolsbury Channel, Tolsbury Creek and Sulcut Channel, really good, uh, really good place to see uh, spotted red shank in the winter and, uh, and turnstones too. So away from the waders, um, the coastal marshes, good place to come catch up with things like barn owl in the winter. Um, these can be seen feeding in the sort of, well, any time of the day, especially in the winter. Um, this one was just taken around lunchtime, um, completely oblivious to us uh, watching it. And then we get a few, a few odd rarities turn up in the winter. This was a, a glossy ibis that turned up on the marshes at Copt Hall um, five or six years ago now. Um, this was a bit of a surprise. So I'd been leading a group around Old Hall marshes and we'd been out all day and not seen a wood pigeon all day. And I happened to pick out a wood pigeon in flight. And as I was tracking this wood pigeon, I looked underneath it and here was this glossy ibis. So it just goes to show birding is all about a bit of luck. And uh, I couldn't not put in a picture of a medgull. So this is a sort of second year medgull. Um, the area around West Mersey, really good place to see Mediterranean gulls in the winter. So I slipped, slipped that one in. And uh, not seen for a few years now, but uh, certainly twite. Um, you used to get lots of twite around the coast. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, these were taken on Mersey a few years back. Um, but yeah, very scarce winter visitor nowadays. A few non avian uh, um, residents. See the conic ponies at uh, Tolsbury. And here's just a couple of shots from uh, West Mersey just showing the fishing boats and sailing boats. If you've been out on the estuary, you've probably seen this. This is the Radio Caroline boat, uh, Ross Revenge, that's moored out um, off Tolsbury. Um, they do still broadcast from there apparently, if you're into uh, radio. Oh, we're out of the cold season into the spring now. So the days are getting longer. The sun's a bit higher and this higher in the sky now. Everything's starting to change colour. This is a view out over the Tolsbury sort of saltings with Bradwell in the distance and Tolsbury over sort of right hand side. So the, after all the winter rains, um, the sort of the areas around Tolsbury are prime. Prime, the, the RSPB and the Essex Wildlife Trust manage the reserves 
um, for breeding waders. Um, and you can see this is a bale field on Old Hall Marshes. So the water levels are ideal. So perfect places for wintering, uh, sorry, for breeding waders and uh, ducks to, uh, to use. And again, everything's just changing color now. Just starting to, bit of warmth on your back, which is good. So as, as we go into spring, the ducks start get, getting a little bit frisky. So this is a nice male shoveler. And these, these can be found around the estuary. Um, here's a male that's uh, displaying to a female. It does this lovely head bobbing. These are quite a common sight around the sort of freshwater margins. And uh, as our, we still get a few teal, uh, most of the teal leave us uh, in the winter, but we still get a few around in the spring. Um, a few do stay to breed, but this is a cracking drake. Um, well worth scanning through the duck flocks in the spring. As you might catch up with one of these, this is a cracking drake gargany. Um, this was taken at Old Hall Marshes. It was Old Hall Marshes uh, a few years ago. Um, but yeah, these appear from sort of late March onwards. Um, and again, that really does brighten your day up. Our magansas are just about still hanging on. Here's the some males displaying. They sort of throw their heads back and forward. Um, so we've got a couple of look, these three, four males there displaying. But these will be leaving us and heading north. But again, sort of March, April, sometimes into May, you can still see these. Then a few of our waders, our winter rough that we saw at Old Hall Marshes um, has now started to molt. Um, so again, any wet grassland is good for rough in the spring. And if you're very, very lucky, you might see a male with a rough. I have to admit this one wasn't taken in Essex, but, uh, but we do occasionally get them looking like this. Lapwings around the, around the estuary are uh, displaying uh, that lovely iridescent green plumage. Uh, very, very numerous wader. Um, and again, the areas around Tolsbury, Bradwell, and uh, South sort of Blackwater is good for those. And as you wander around the sea walls and footpaths, you may well hear the jangling notes of the corn bunting. Uh, these are again. A nice a resident bird of the Blackwater um, and breed up, breed sort of, well, not commonly, but uh, certainly around the estuary, as do a few pairs of yellow hammers, cracking mail here. And as uh, we go into, as we sort of start into March, everyone's out looking for their first wheat ear. This is a nice male wheat ear, um, cracking bird. Winters in Africa, and uh, some do breed in Essex, but they most majority pass through on in the spring. And here's another wheat here. Um, and they just love using fence posts as perches. And you just see that white rump as they fly off. In those sort of late March, early April days, check the grassland for uh, yellow wagtails. Again, that really does brighten up your spring day if you see one of these. So as spring goes on, a lot of the waders are changing plumage into their uh, breeding colours, so, but none more spectacular than the, the black-tailed godwit. These absolutely, there's a bit of, a, a bit of an array of plumages here, but you can see you've got some cracking chestnut, uh, chestnut looking birds in the middle there. So these will sort of molt from sort of March into April or February into April um, before heading north to Iceland to their breeding grounds. The, area, the areas around, certainly around Malden, um, really good place to see black-tailed godwits in big numbers. And also really worth looking out for colorings as well. And again, they give some absolutely fabulous views as they fly about when the tide comes in. Um, this particular shot was taken, um, a sparrowhawk came through the flock and uh, put them all up and managed to grab a few shots of these, but absolutely stunning with this big white wing bar and black tail. 
So springtime, um, Wimbrel, so relative to the curlew, much shorter bill with this distinct sort of eye stripe and head, head crown stripe. These move through as they head north to their breeding grounds. Um, again, the wet grasslands around Bradwell, Tolls breed really good for these. Um, very distinctive call. They do a sort of seven whistle call, sort of a, that's probably only about six, but uh, who's counting? Um, so yeah, wind brawls pass through. Um, our avocets that were wintering now have paired up and are now doing, they're chasing each other around doing display flights. Very noisy. And again, start, numbers are increasing around the black water, which is really good to, really good to see. Um, a few birds that are passed through, um, common sandpiper. These pass through on their way north, um, stopping off at the freshwater sites. And if you're very, very lucky, some springs, uh, you get temink stint that, to stop off, especially a good area, Old Hall Marshes is very good for these. And a few other rarities. Um, this is, although it looks very much like a green shank, uh, this is a marsh sandpiper. And I think this was taken, I think this was back as far as, or back 2006, I think it was. Uh, and there was one, one in the spring off sort of Haybridge Basin. Um, I think Haybridge has had a few records over the years. So well worth, again, well worth scanning through your waders. You may, may be lucky and pick out one of these. And as uh, the days get warmer, cuckoos arrive. And again, Haybridge gravel pits is one of the best places um, in Essex to see these. Um, there's always a good number around, as well as Old Hall Marshes, another good place. But they love feeding on the brown tail moth caterpillars. Um, this is a nice male here that's cuckooing in flight. Our cormorants that breed at Aberton come still come down onto the estuary to breed. Um, this is a nice bird in breeding plumage with this lovely white, uh, white sort of hairdo. But so these still come down to the black water to breed, to, to fish. And then on a few other sort of gravel pits or the, the lakes bordering the rest estuary, we get a few pairs of little ring plover um, come every spring as well. Some stay to breed and some just move through. Now, these are becoming a, a bit of a regular site now uh, in Essex and on the Blackwater. Spoonbills. Um, obviously, we had our first breeding pair at Spoonbills in Essex last year at Aberton. Um, but these birds can be found all around the coast. Um, and I've seen these in Haybridge, um, Bradwell. Yeah, I've seen these all over. Um, Tolsbury Wick, Old Hall. Um, but occasionally we have the odd pair linger in the spring. Um, as well as things like great white egret. Great white egrets now quite a common, common sight. So uh, a few warblers, or a warbler, this is sedge warbler. So these, these and reed warblers arrive in the spring and uh, the reed beds are alive with the chattering of these lovely summer visitors. So speaking of summer, nice calm conditions. The barges are out with a nice calm breeze. So everything's in full swing breeding season. The lapwings have got chicks. Um, this is a bird that's keeping an eye on chicks. Um, again, lovely breeding colours. So these are still uh, looking after their young. As are, we have a few pairs of red shank, um, especially again around Tolsbury, Old Hall. Um, have a few pairs. But so this one's keeping an eye out from its post. And they do show very, very well. Little egrets, again, when I first started birding, God, never dreamed of seeing a little egret. It was just a picture in the field guide. Um, these birds are in breeding plumage. You can just about make out, it's got these lovely purple laws. Yeah, and these, they, they, their feet become much more darker or orangey, orangey a color. But uh, yeah, these breed, birds breed sort of around the estuary. Now this picture, thanks to uh, Simon Wood for this. So although not, these are a, a stone's throw from the uh, Blackwater estuary, but this is Essex's first pair of K 
cattle egrets, which nested in Haybridge um, a few years back. Um, thanks to Simon for this wonderful picture. Yeah, look at this. Lovely adult cattle egret there with three chicks. Um, so these, these are becoming much more of a common sight in Essex. And uh, hopefully in the next few years, we'll, uh, we'll be seeing lots more of these beauties. Oyster catchers nest around the coast, especially around the shingly areas. Very common wader, especially in the winter, but uh, we have quite a few pairs in the summer. And our marsh harriers. Marsh, we've still got a few pairs of marsh harrier breeding, which is always good to see. And the males in the summer and spring do this lovely sort of sky dancing um, flight. They, and you can hear them calling and they're so high up in the sky. And here's a, another bird flying over me. Again, right on the outer estuary, where you get a few pairs of ring plovers. Um, these are quite prone to disturbance, especially in the summer from uh, things like paddle boarders and uh, yacht, yacht people that moor up on the beaches. Um, because little, a ring plover's nest is very, very camouflage. And although uh, they don't think there's anything there, they can be disturbing the birds. We have a few terns nest around the, around the Blackwater, um, especially the most common species is common tern. Um, so these winter in Africa and come back in the spring. But these, these are, can be found around Haybridge, um, Goldhanger, um, Old Hall, Tolsbury. And then we still have a few pairs, although numbers are uh, low at the moment, but they're doing a lot of work um, dumping tons and tons of shingle out around the estuary um, to try and create new areas for little terns to nest. So uh, hopefully we'll be seeing little terns in the future. And I can never have a talk without another Mediterranean gull in. So Mediterranean gulls, again, Used to be really, really rare, but now they're breeding around the Blackwater. Is a very fine adult that's uh, obviously, I don't know what it's been feeding on, but it's a little bit mucky, needs a wash there. But uh, absolutely fabulous, fabulous bird. And then in some summers we get uh, eiders. So this is a young drake eider. Um, we used to get good numbers in the winter. Um, tends to be a lot scarcer nowadays. I don't think they're coming as far south from their sort of breeding grounds. But occasionally we get a drake, young drake that's molting, that spends the, wind, the summer on the black water. And uh, our good old friend, the mute swan. Again, these breed all around the black water. So we're, uh, how are we doing for time? Yeah, we're doing fine. We're finishing up with autumn now. So a little bit sad because the days are getting shorter. You know, we're not, uh, our birding time is not as long, which is always a shame. So this is a shot from Tolls, from Old Hall Marshes by the looks of it, looking out towards uh, West Mersey. And you know, the weather's now changing a little bit. We've got sort of stormy clouds coming and, uh, but the birds are changing. So, so we're getting our first arrivals from the Arctic. This is a very fine Dunlin that was sort of blown in from a storm. Um, one year gave amazing views. I think it obviously flown in from the Arctic, was just absolutely exhausted and uh, gave some lovely views. But of course, autumn time is a great time to see some of these waders that nest in the high Arctic that are working their way south um, to winter in uh, southern Europe and Africa. So, in this shot, we've got three species we've got uh, Dunlin, so it's Dunlin sort of left, middle, and top right. And then we've got a longer, a longer build, longer legged curlew sandpiper here. It's a juvenile curlew sandpiper. And then just in the background there, it's a bit blurry, depth of field's a bit poor. Um, there's a couple of little stints. So all three species will pass through uh, Essex in the wind, in the autumn. Some years we get bigger numbers of little stints and curlew sandpipers than others. But again, always worth sifting through your flocks in the uh, in the autumn. And here's a picture of a juvenile curlew sandpiper. And this was taken, uh, Simon Wood and I were leading a Thames barge trip off from Malden. 
and we had a little walk beforehand and this curly sandpiper was feeding right by the path completely oblivious to uh you know children on their bikes and people with chips and candy floss and all that sort of stuff but yeah they, this gave some amazing views and here's a bit of a cropped shot of another curly sandpiper so little stint bit, pe bit a bit better picture of a little stint this is a juvenile those like dark legs these nice white tram lines down its back so again these pass through in some years big well i would say big numbers but you know sort of double figure you know tens and twenties maybe if you're lucky and again uh, around Old Hall Marshes is probably the better place to see these. Uh, occasionally get them up as far as Malden. And a few green shank as well. You get good numbers of green shank in the autumn passing through. And a few will stay to winter. Uh, the area around Haybridge Basin, really good place to see wintering green shank. And again, it's the time to look out for scarcities. This is pectoral sandpiper. This is a young one, so this would have probably bred in Siberia or North America and uh, it's taken the wrong turn and turned up here in the autumn. It's lovely sort of white tram lines and sort of lovely russet plumage and sort of yellowy, yellowy legs. Again, another bird to keep your eyes peeled for. Now, some, some autumns we get northerly storms and uh, these little, uh, this little, poor little waif and stray, the little orc, these get blown down the North Sea from the Arctic and uh, can occasionally be seen in the Blackwater. Uh, you tend to see them more off the sort of the outer reaches of the Blackwater, um, around sort of Bradwall, Mersey. But occasionally birds do get blown inland and can be found in borodikes, uh, like this bird, this poor bird. Um, I don't think this bird survived, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, Amazing it is to see, it's very sad as well. So although we have a few bit pairs of bearded tip all year round, um, autumn and winter is probably the best place to see, best time to see these. Um, I can really recommend Haybridge uh, gravel pits and places like Old Hall Marshes to see these. Um, you can, especially when it's a nice still day, they give some absolutely fabulous views. Um, and again, look at that. I mean, that's just a cracker. You can see why they're called bearded tits, or sorry, bearded reedlings. There's another uh, nice male. But I say, yeah, November, December is a really good time to see these. Also, that time, this time of year, we're looking out for uh, birds coming down from the north and the uh, and east. So this is shorty owl. So we get, well, some years we get good numbers wintering around the estuary. Um, but again, places like um, Tolsbury Wick, Bradwell, um, and Old Hall Marshes, and Mersey, really good place to catch up with these. Um, look at that, as that, that, that yellow glare is, uh, is amazing. And then we just finish up with a few more species now. Um, so wind chats. So again, these breed up high with along with wheat ears in the high northern parts of Britain and Europe, but we get good numbers passing through uh, Essex in the autumn. And they just love these rough, sort of out rough fields and fence posts. If you're out on the sea walls or reserves, check your fence posts in the autumn for wind chats, because uh, especially August through to end of September, you won't, you'll probably see these. And then as autumn comes on, we get a few rock pipits, um, coming to Essex for the winter. Uh, these are of the Scandinavian race, um, but these can be found around the sea walls, pretty much all the way around the Blackwater. Lovely bird, you know, not people, it's just a little brown job, but it's a, yeah, cracking lovely plumage on that. Most dark legs and sort of wavy grey plumage. And then we'll finish up the last shot of the evening. So um, I'm sure a lot of you remember this. I had to Google tonight when this bird turned up. This bird, this is a great grey shrike. Um, and this bird turned up um, at Haybridge in 2015. So Google tells me. Um, I only thought it was a couple of years ago, but time flies. And this spent 
this spent virtually it spent months wintering around the Haybridge gravel pits area. Um, loads of people came to see it. Um, really, really popular, popular bird with photographers and non bird watchers. Loads of people who were out for a walk, um, you know, were asking what we were looking at. And just, you know, it's just nice to engage with the non birders and the public. So, yeah, this bird spent ages and ages around Haybridge gravel pits. Um, obviously liked it and uh, certainly one of the one of the highlights of my bird watching around the Blackwater my 40 odd years bird watching around the Blackwater so that pretty much uh, brings it all to a close tonight oh it's at about an hour and a quarter that went bad so um, yeah so we've got our website www.swallowbirding.co.uk so if anyone's interested in tours, day trips, do some really nice Thames barge trips. So if you want to get out on, on the water, um, on traditional boats, then check out our website. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much.